what, what are you seeing as some of those things that you would like to transfer to the next generation, like your son? Of course, the fathers have dropped some things for us. We have fathers like Jack Cole, who have done mighty deeds. We have fathers, patriarchs, God's generals, who have done a lot of things, and they have inspired us, and they are still inspiring us, and we desire more. But looking from this balance, what are the things that you see and that you strongly desire to be able to transfer to like a next generation? Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's truly really an honor to be here. Thank you so much, You're man welcome, of sir. God. Yes, sir. It's truly really an honor. Bless God for your life. Thank you. Thank you for your impact. Thank you, sir. Thank you for all you do for us and everyone that loves the Lord. Um, I'll try to keep it short. So we can build up. Yes. Uh, I know you have a lot of questions yes, you want to ask. So I'll just keep it short. Um, there are five major divine heritages that God left for man when he created man. Study the scriptures. These were the major things that God allocated to man before the fall. When Jesus came, these five things were the same things he restored man to walk in. So it's something that every generation must carry experientially mm. if there will be a hope for that generation. Mm. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. Those were two things. Number one is the image of God. The image of God is the glory of God. That is what defines his being. And the second thing God allocated to man was his essential attribute. That is his likeness. In Genesis 1.28, he said, let them have dominion. The third thing is authority. And then in Genesis 2 verse 9, he said, God planted the man in the garden. And as he put him there, he said, he planted the tree of life. So the fourth thing he gave man was life. And in Genesis chapter 3 verse 9, we saw that in the cool of the day, the voice of God came walking in the garden. So the 15 was intimacy. Every generation that must make impact must experientially host the glory of God, demonstrate the likeness of God, carry authority enough to defend the integrity of a territory, and number four, palpably express and walk under the government of life, and then number five, there must be a walk of intimacy. If there is anything I want my son to see and carry as a token from me, it's not an anointing to raise the dead. Mm. It's not an anointing to heal the sick. Mm. It's not the ability to preach the gospel. It's the capacity to bear the life of God, the capacity to bear the glory of God, mm. the capacity to walk in intimacy with the Lord because he would see me walking with God on a daily basis mm. and on the strength of that intimacy and the government of life, walk in so much authority that he will be able to defend the integrity of the territory where he finds himself. Wow. That's just simple. Wow, thank you so much. Can we celebrate our first please? All right, I, I would just like to build it up from there. Talking about um, intimacy, building intimacy, I want you to just um, uh, shed some light to somebody out there that is desirous of knowing what are the basic steps to building a consistency where an intimate walk with God is concerned. Now, there are people who say, oh, I, 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 I mean, I have some very good time of prayer, and then after a while, it's affected. I get maybe distracted and stuff like that. Um, there are a lot of people who, the only time they enjoy God is when they come among other believers. They've not really mastered how to develop a quality work that, you know, is discerning of hearing God's voice that helps them to be able to have not just a quality devotion, to be able to walk with the Lord, walk in the Spirit. I want you to throw some light on building an intimate walk with the Lord. Thank you very much. Um, the journey of intimacy is actually the most fundamental aspect of our lives. The reason is because everything God has to offer exists in the ambience of his realm. A man who does not have an intimate walk with God and function under the government of his presence cannot do anything worthwhile in the kingdom. And sure. so every believer must learn and make it a lifestyle to walk with the Lord. Now, in order to build a walk of, of intimacy with the Lord, four things are required. The first is consecration. The reason I'm saying this is because somebody may be out there who has lost his or her fire. 
Mm. And so you cannot just begin from the organic dimension. And when I talk about the organic dimension, I'm referring to the life protocol that flows from within. Mm. Because consecration is something you begin from the external. But eventually, it will transfer from the external to the internal. It is first of all extrinsic, then it goes to an intrinsic reality. Because when you begin with discipline, it will become hunger. Mm. Hunger is superior to discipline. True. If you were to eat every day by, by discipline, eating will become a body. But because of the alarm system, intrinsic alarm system of hunger that is on your inside, whether you are disciplined about it or not, hunger will ensure that you look for food every day, yeah. be it young or old. But the way to journey from the external to the internal is to begin actually from the external. And the external dimension requires that you build and fortify the walls of your soul with a consecrated life. Mm. How do you do that? There are spiritual life forces, lifestyle that is recommended from, for every believer. For example, Jesus said, when thou prayest, when thou fastest. So there are certain things that are a when, not if. If it were if, it would be a choice, whether you want to do it or not. But if it's a when, it means it's a must. Yeah. It's not something you choose to do. So the first way to build consecration is to decide to deliberately weave in some of these spiritual provisions into your everyday life. When you start, you discover it's difficult, I assure you. You want to pray every morning for one hour. You want to fast twice in a week. You want to study your Bible every day for 30 minutes for one hour. At first, it's like a struggle. But while you are doing that, you begin to migrate to the second layer. The second layer is to begin to ask God to help, help you. He said, quicken us, O God, that we may call upon your name. And the reason is because the spiritual activities in themselves are not the goal. They are a means to an end. If your focus is not God himself, you will make religion out of prayers. Mm. You will make religion out of fasting. Mm. And at the end of the day, prayers, fasting will become burdensome. Sure. So while we are fasting, our focus is the Lord. He said, whoever cometh to him must believe that he is. So you begin by building a consecration. While you are building that consecration, you are telling God to help you because he is the one you are looking for. And so as you are doing that, a point will come when the Holy Ghost will take over. Mm. When the Holy Ghost takes over, your consecration will, be, will migrate from something you do as a lifestyle to something that becomes part of your life force. Mm. So consecration migrates to intrinsic operations like hunger, mm. like bodies. Mm. So a point will come before now you were praying as a daily discipline. But the point comes where the altar begins to draw you. Mm. A point comes when God puts a burden, either for souls or for the territory on your life. Mm. You have moved from consecration to a life operation. Mm. The law of the spirit of life has been activated. Mm. The problem people have most times is that when they journey from consecration to the law of life, then they negate the provisions of consecration that brought them to the law of life. Mm. So they stop fasting, they stop praying, they start watching movies, they start moving from place to place, and after a while, the law of life, the protocol of the law of life is truncated. Mm. They will have to go back to step one. But if you are building intimacy with the Lord, you must ensure that the cycle is completed. Mm. So you journey from consecration to the law of life. Yeah. As the law of life is in motion, a point will come when God will now move you forward to instructions. Mm. It's a progression. You began from consecration, you journeyed into the law of life, then you migrate into instructions. Those instructions God is giving you will form a spiritual culture around your life. Those spiritual cultures will become the gateway through which God accesses your realm. Mm. The more you obey him, the more pliable you become in the hand of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And so as you begin to keep those instructions as a way of life, a point will come when you will break into the realm of the voice of God. The realm of the voice of God is actually the realm of intimacy. That is where you know as you are known. You are not just doing something because you are hoping something will happen. You are actually looking at him every morning. When you get to the realm of the voice of God, something will happen to you. The flesh will be substituted for the spirit. He said, we all with open faces, beholding as in the glass, the image of the Lord, we are changed. So intimacy, by way of definition, is not just a walk with God. Yeah. Intimacy is actually a state when you become like God. Because you journeyed from consecration, you entered the law of life, you came to instruction, and then you broke into the realm of the voice of God. In the realm of the voice of God, God becomes like a theater that you behold every morning. Mm. And a point will come, you now discover that you are like the God that you are seeking. Mm. If you are talking about the secret place, for example, yes. there are three layers to the secret place. The first layer of the secret place is where you find God. So the Bible says, 
he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. But that's the lowest realm of the secret place. If the secret place for you is a place where you lock yourself to seek God, then you are still beginning the journey. Because after you begin to seek God in a place and his cloud, his glory, his presence begins to come there, you will now migrate from that place where the glory of God meets you to a location in Christ. Because Christ is a place. Christ is a system. There are locations in Christ. When your journey of the secret place moves from where you go to for the glory to come to a location in Christ, Christ will become a law unto you. So you may not, if you look at the fathers, for example, sometimes they are not going to hide somewhere. But while they are walking in their daily life, they are walking under a government. Because these ones have entered a place. You know, the Bible said, he has given us all spiritual blessings in places in Christ Jesus. So this guy is not going to a place where the cloud comes. He has found a niche in Christ Jesus. And then the point comes when, as you walk under that law, you will now get to that point where he is in you and with you forever. So you become the presence of God. You know, the guys that carry the ark of God carry the presence of God. So everywhere you go becomes a secret place. That's what intimacy with God looks like. It begins with consecration. It gets to a place of a life force. It gets to a place of the voice. And then it gets to a place of beholding him. And then you are changed. The point comes when, when people see you, they see Christ in you. And when they are seeking Christ, they look for you. Wow. you have Thank you so much for that. Wow, beautiful.